So, you know, I was also very lucky to hear that in Bulgaria there are now the British uh, pensioners, retired people buying properties. So, you know, this is a kind, again, of uh, idealization of, uh, of place being uh, suitable almost as a kind of uh, uh, utopia, as a kind of ideal. But in Macedonia, let's say, and I know in Serbia, all these Syrian refugees that went through, no one really wanted to stay. So more than 5,000 people passed through the country uh, and they were uh, allowed to ask for exile or asylum, but they never, never see. But we were also having uh, from Serbia some interesting example of street artists who choose to reside in, in, in Belgrade. So, yes, for us it's, uh, it's important to have Sabina, uh, which actually uh, did uh, his graduation on the management of diversity, and uh, then also she is now in Skopje, trying to, to find these traces uh, of the present of Poland here, but also finding the traces of Macedonia in Poland. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yes, thank you. Take the floor. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, uh, we are talking about migration as a modern problem, but, but we all know that it's not only modern. Um, we can talk about migration process when we remember ancient tribes coming to Europe from Central Asia, or even when we um, imagine first human coming from the continent of Africa. So it's not a modern problem and we can say that migration is in human nature somehow for of course many different reasons uh, for looking for food, um, work, better condition to live but uh, we are in Macedonia in very diverse environment and I'm from Poland so it was kind of obvious for me to look for some connections between our both nations and I found a lot of them, and many types of migrations. So I'd like to uh, talk about some of them. And we were talking about refugees and I can't resist that uh, impression that all uh, discussions are a little bit sad and we have that nostalgic feeling somewhere in us. But I'd like to show you something and I hope uh, it will be the example of even very tragic um, events can be transformed into something creative, inspire and something which enrich our cultural heritage, both nations cultural heritage. So speaking about refugee, we of course know about Syrian people, Afghan people, but you might know that uh, Poland was a shelter for refugees from Egan Macedonia in late 40s and it was because of the communist war in, in Greece and um, a lot of people over 14 and a half thousand of people came uh, to Poland especially young kids um, separate from their families so you can imagine how big trauma it was and the mission of rescue was kept in secret because uh, Poland was in Soviet bloc countries that time and Soviet Union didn't want to uh, support this mission officially uh, so the transport of refugees was kept in secret when the ships came to our ports um, the people from neighborhood were evacuated to do not see what's going on and kids um, were settled uh, in Silesia region, Śląsk in Polish, and that's why, speaking about diversity. At that time, uh, Śląsk, Silesia region, was the, the most um, diverse region in Poland. Uh, it was the land recovered after Second World War, um, and after Germans, we settled there people from other regions, and there were people from different with different identities, different customs and, and traditions. So it was a diverse region, uh, actually well developed after war. And it was really easy, I guess, to, to hide the, uh, another group, different group of people in between those people from many different regions of Poland. So um, these people came especially to Zgorzelec, Legnica and Wrocław and um, in the first part of their stay, they were isolated from locals, 
uh, they were educating in special educational centers, more like military camps. And um, there were, I need to admit, uh, because you see the um, uh, Greek uh, alphabet here, uh, it was the group, mixed group of Greek people, of Macedonians and Vlachs. And after a couple of years, Polish teachers uh, actually uh, understood that um, it's not one coherent group. Um, some of them speak um, Slavic language, some of them they don't. Uh, so it was really confusing to teach them and to, to, to behave with them. Uh, on the picture you can see the school, also hear uh, the kids from, from the school. And uh, I need to, to stick in about um, cultural heritage. This year, uh, it was the premiere show of theater play made by uh, Jacek Gwont, the Polish uh, director from the theater from Legnica. Legnica was one of the cities where they were settled. And it, this is the story about uh, these refugees, the Egan Macedonians who came to Poland. And it's very important to notice that it was cooperation. One part of the show is in uh, Polish, one part is in Macedonian, and the team of actors is mixed with Polish and Macedonian people. And now uh, on the 18th was the premiere show in, in Legnica in Poland after the uh, tour here uh, in Macedonia. And here I have the map. I'm not sure, yeah, you, you can see the circles uh, speaking about diaspora a little bit. Um, first, they were mostly here in Silesia region. Uh, here was the, um, um, the home for um, kids without families. I forgot this word. And uh, after a couple of years, when the integration of these people started, they were moving to other regions because of lack of, of work uh, in this region. And um, I made a blue <laughs> circle here uh, because this is the Shadow Mountains region. And this is very important for me personal because I'm from this region. And I found the information that um, there is only few families uh, who are living there. Um, all, actually, all of them re-emigrate when they have that kind of chance in, in 70s and 80s. Uh, so this is the one example of refugees. And I need to admit that in Poland it's not a well-known topic. Uh, but maybe uh, more known uh, is the topic of mobility of artists or uh, migration because of some artistic needs and, of course, international health needs, but uh, for one moment. I'm sure you all heard and know about tragic earthquake from 1963 and the rescue and rebuilding mission with international help of the team of architects, urban planners and, and workers all over the world. Uh, and, of course, you know the person, uh, Ken Zutanga, who was the, the main uh, architect here. But on the picture, you have also the, the, the Polish accent because um, this man is Adolf Ciborowski and he was the manager of UN Skopje Urban Plan Project between 1964 and 67. And by the way, there is a street um, named by Adolf Ciborowski here in Skopje. And speaking of street, uh, another uh, example of diversity and something creative. I'm sure you know the um, uh, district of Taftalija and the streets named there by capitals or nations who, which helped uh, in rebuilding. So in Skopje you have a lot of streets and let me make some examples like London Street, Paris Street, Oslo, Helsinki, of course Warszawska, Warsaw Street as well. Uh, so I guess it's, Skopje is only one city in the world which this kind of international uh, accents um, in the names of the streets and it reflects real situation from, from the past. It's not the end uh, of this topic with, with tragic earthquake and international help because in this period um, a lot of countries helped Macedonia to rebuild public buildings, libraries, schools and other public service infrastructure. 
Uh, and one um, example is very close to, to my heart <laughs> because it's the building of Museum of Contemporary Art there up on the hill. Um, and this is the project of Polish architects team from Warsaw, the, the Tigers. And they made it in 1966 and the official opening was on November 13th, 1970. So two weeks ago it was the 36th anniversary. And in this museum, there are artworks given by artists from all over the world as a gift of solidarity. Uh, and I should <laughs> inform you that uh, among them, there is a Polish collection of 212 artworks, paintings, sculptures, and graphics given by 135 artists, the, the most outstanding Polish uh, artists. And it's one of the biggest Polish collection abroad. This uh, example of diversity and, and rebuilding, it's very vivid here. And to the end uh, of the speech, another type of migration, which is one type of migration, like migration of hearts, like following our hearts. In between the 70s and 80s, uh, many Polish women came here to, to Macedonia. It was Yugoslavia, of course, uh, at the time. But they came here to the territory of present Macedonia. They get married here and they live here. They left everything behind them, like families, known environment, friends, everything, and started everything from the beginning. And now they raised the new generation of, let's say, half Polish, half Macedonian uh, kids. And I'm just curious if those kids will have two homelands, if they have some, will have some kind of identity with Poland and in Macedonia, will they speak Polish or Polish and Macedonian? And I guess it's open topic for, for the future to, to make a research. Thank you so much. Thank you.